All right, everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Life in the Lair. And today I'm going to be covering it's a little bit of a history lesson uh, with a little bit of politics and reality being mixed into it uh, because I'm trying to let everyone know the whole ride that we're on, known as the United States, is officially wobbling. Hopefully not, but relatively soon, probably in the next decade, it's going to collapse. I'm going to go back to when this whole thing began, and we're going to move on from there. You know, it's not every day you get to see a presidential election get stolen right from under your nose. And it's not every day you get to read a seven-year-old book that called it. If you want to enjoy the decline and accept the death of the United States, links are in the description. Or not. I'm not going to beg you. You probably have orn pay links up in the same window. <laughs> Go away. Everyone's familiar with Korea and Vietnam, all right? The Korean War broke out uh, to basically stop communism from taking over the globe. You know, NATO got involved. We ponied up our guys. We went over there, we fought them. A lot of dudes got smoked. And then uh, they said, okay, they stopped the war and drew a line down the middle of Korea. And that boundary still sticks to this day. And they came back. Yes, their names are on walls and so forth, for, but for the most part, they're forgotten. And then about a decade later-ish, uh, you had the Vietnam conflict break out. Again, we start drafting people, sending people over there wholesale, even though special operations could have handled it, but big army, big army always fucks it up, takes it away from the spec ops, and they want to run their big ass huge mission mission creep bullshit and burn through billions of dollars and you know you know millions if not hundreds of thousands of people's lives now we were lucky in vietnam we lost you know somewhere like between 50 and 60 thousand uh american servicemen a large majority of them were male and draftees you know somewhere in the neighborhood of like three to seven million uh enemy combatants were you know whacked and that's just the way it is when you have B-52s and you have all of the big guns and whatever. And even though we won every battle in Vietnam, we still quit and lost the war. But that's that's another issue. But back here on stateside, you had a lot of people throwing fits because they were getting drafted to go fight in a war that they didn't really believe in. Okay, now the reason they're able to do that is World War II ended and every, this country enjoyed a huge wave of unprecedented prosperity. All right, literally, I mean, it, the, the United States became incredibly wealthy. Everyone was getting cars. You know, this, the standard of living was going up. Lifespans are going up. Everyone was fat and happy, and no one wanted to go do the hard shit, which, in reality, it needs to be done. All right, there's, there's always going to be tough shit that you're going to have to just grin and bear it. Nobody, you don't win everything. Most of the time, you lose, and nothing in this world is fucking free. Not a goddamn thing. So you have a lot of these anti-war individuals, peaceniks, you know, what have you. They finish their educations and they go take over a lot of teaching jobs in the 1970s. A lot of those teachers influenced yet the next generation in the 80s who became school teachers and professors Though you don't see the large portion of the anti-American, socialist, feminist professors in college until roughly the 90s, the mid-90s to late 90s, when you have the, you know, the individuals from the 80s who had their brains cooked from the, these nugs down here taking over in colleges. And a large majority of the teachers today you know, they're basically anti-American, pro-socialist communist. 
That is exactly what's happening here with the teachers and in a majority of the uh, colleges. Whenever you hear anyone talk about equity or a quality of outcome, that is code speak for socialism slash communism. Listen, life isn't fucking fair. In America, you got a really good deal. You're allowed to come up to the starting line and fucking and, and start. Nobody's holding you back. What you do beyond there is up to you. All right. Nobody's holding you back except yourself. All right. Yeah, you can whine and cry. You know, you came up in a single family home and, you know, you're on the wrong side of the tracks. Okay. So what, comma? I don't fucking care. Man up, put on your cowboy hat and fucking roll out. There's a lot of people who came from that exact same circumstance that are doing really good. All right, so now we have this whole nut roll, roughly, you know, 2000 to today, pro-socialist fucking bullshit. And, and this is not going away, you know, not until shit gets really fucking bad. And, you know, there's going to be blood to be had by all. All right, now... In the 1970s, you had the ERA, no-fault divorce, and the welfare uh, state basically came into being. All right, now, the equal rights, you know, the women wanted to have, you know, equal opportunity, which they have, and it has now morphed into equal uh, outcome, which is socialism, because they're fucking too weak to do shit themselves. And you got the no-fault divorce, which basically disintegrated the family. All right, if you look at the divorce rates in the, the late 70s, 80s, and early 90s, they're astronomical. In fact, they studied a lot of the outcomes of these divorces and the effects it was having on children. And it was so egregious that they literally cut funding for such studies because they didn't want to know. So these individuals here in the 70s basically cut America's throat for the slow, you know, the slow bleeding death that it was, it's, it's now going to go through in the near future. You know, and you saw in the 1980s and 90s, the, you know, the total disintegration of the family and some of the side effects of this were like the incredibly rampant drugs, especially in the inner cities, the spike in crime rate, you know, the abortion. I mean, it just literally is just a, it's just nightmare fuel. And, you know, and in the inner cities, a large majority of this stuff was from the black community because you know, let's say they're the canary in the coal mine and the whole disintegration of the family started in their communities first and it hasn't gone anywhere good. And on a side note, that same philosophy or way of life is now spilling over into the Caucasian white community. And when enough of those people are born out of wedlock, Rule of law in this country will be unsustainable without a huge, huge upturn in everything and piles of blood. All right. No one likes to hear that. I'm just saying when the rule of law goes away and the warlords come into power, that is the currency of the world that they all, that we will all live in when that happens. It has happened before and it will happen again. I'm not telling anyone anything new here. This is all, it's all basically history repeats. We forgot our history because of these fucked up teachers. And we're going to basically go right down that road again. Now we have in 2020, we have devolved into a state where we lose track of gender and sex. Seriously. You can't look between your legs and go, oh, that's what I have and that's what I am. No. Now there's like 120 some odd different genders uh, to be expressed for whatever equipment you have hanging between your legs. All right. Uh, we're trying to give agency to four-year-olds to determine if they're going to have their stuff whacked off and the natural progression of their body halted so they could be something that they're not. All right. And by the way, this whole transgender shit is based off the philosophy of they were born in the wrong body. Now, uh, last I looked, I believe we have a big thing here in the United States, which is the separation of church and state. 
because the church basically operates on metaphysical arguments. Well, if you believe you're born in the wrong body, that is a metaphysical argument. And now we have created whole laws around this metaphysical argument, which we weren't supposed to do in the first place. Well, la di da di everybody, we're now ruining our entire country and civilization for one quarter of 1% of the general population. Congratulations, slow golf clap on that one. Now, because you have no, no family, no father at home, and uh, most of the time these children are raised in daycare, the mother is around because she has to work, and do basically everyone's job, the man, the man and the woman's job, because they can have it all. And you can't have it all, but you do everything half as good. Half as good as 50%. Last time I looked, in school, you got 50%. You failed. Those are the facts. Okay, so everyone is offended now, and there are no losers. How the hell are you going to prepare a generation of people who are offended by everything that goes on, and they believe there are no winners and losers. Well, you turn on Animal Planet and you see the lion running down a gazelle and killing it and eating it. Guess what you just saw there? You have a winner and you have a loser. That is how the world works. You ever hear of the food chain? We got big brains. We can manipulate the environment. We have tools. We elevated to the top of the food chain and we pretty much eat everything below us. Why? Because we can and that's how the world works. So now you have a whole mess of these little whiny little titty baby crybabies who are going to be running this country based on emotion. You know what's going to happen after that? We're on the verge of mob rule. Now, what other civilization in the past fell into mob rule and anarchy? Yeah, wait a minute. The Roman Empire. What's another one? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. France. All of which saw all kinds of turmoil and death shortly after that happened. Now, I'm not saying the monarchy of France deserved what he got because he was a fucking idiot. But I'm just saying, maybe he deserved what he got, but the millions of people who starved and then were marched to their death when Napoleon took over, who, which, who was a warlord, and he wreaked havoc on all of Europe, where millions of people were killed, either through direct action, starvation, and disease. Let's just keep it in perspective. We're moving over here. All right. Uh, who thought, you know, I would be a goddamn history fucking teacher as a retired old grunt, but hey, you guys are fucking stupid. All right, now here we have Biden, the installed, duly elected, somewhat effective, ineffective, bullshit, piece of shit president. If you check every crime bill that the basically was signed into law or put forward, since 1976, you will find his name on them all. All of them. Now, between 1996 and 2016, we have had a overwhelming massive influx in prisoners, an influx of drugs and crime, and the creation of the prison industrial complex. It's getting to the point where somewhere between seven or five and eight percent of our general population, gross population, is involved in some way, shape, or form with the prison industrial complex, which could include probation and so forth, house arrest, what have you. All right, and two, yeah, there's also the, the, sex offender list but that's a whole other issue right there all right so the president that we have now wrote the laws put forward the laws that created the problem of the prison industrial complex and somehow now when he's old senile and probably going to kick off at any moment he's going to somehow fix the whole goddamn thing 
It's not going to fucking happen. He orchestrated all of the crimes and punishment and the laws and everything that came into, into, into being since 1976. In 1980, right around there, plus or minus five, five to seven years, I don't know the exact date, the term qualified immunity started coming into play because, you know, that pesky constitution, you know, uh, you know, we can't have the judges, the prosecutors, the lawmakers and the police, you know, being uh, charged and, and, and so forth for violating constitutional rights, even though that's exactly what they fucking do. All right. So here in Michigan, I have a governor who was slapped down by the Michigan Supreme Court for the bullshit she was doing with her lockdown mandates. And she turned around and then hid behind the health department and is doing the exact same fucking things. We have a massive amount of unemployed. We have a massive amount of businesses that will never reopen. And they're still counting the dead people in the rest homes where COVID patients were sent to recuperate. Now, anyone, you would think somebody who's a governor went to college and they should realize how biology works, that disease attacks the weakest links. Then who's weaker than old people and sick people in rest homes? That was genocide. And she will never see a day in jail. You can't even fucking sue her because of qualified immunity. All right, the same thing with judges. I can't tell you how many guys got off death roll who are completely innocent who are who are kept there for a decade longer because a judge wouldn't fucking let the dna test be done you can't do anything to that judge hell you it, it's next to impossible to complain unless you have an army of people filing complaints against one judge in the state which i will be covering in administrative violence and how you can do that but that's another issue and then you have the prosecutors all right now I'm going to talk a little bit about the Chauvin trial. He was found guilty by a jury of his peers. Do I think he got a fair trial? No, because the jury was not sequestered. It wasn't moved to another venue. All right. And you had a senator, you know, basically screaming for blood and people shooting at the National Guard. I am not surprised that every person in that jury came up with a guilty ver ver a verdict because the mob would come for them. The police aren't going to protect you. So did I think you got a fair trial? No, no, I don't. Now, when I talked about this whole, uh, you know, qualified immunity, they charged Chauvin with manslaughter, second degree murder and third degree murder. One person died. There needs to be something put into place where the prosecutor picks one fucking charge, one, and then goes after you for that. And if you're off, you're off. If, you, if you're convicted, you're convicted. But what people don't realize is when the prosecutor puts a stack of charges on you, as long as you're fucking armed, he's taking away your due process rights under the Constitution of the United States. Because yes, you can defend yourself against one, two, maybe, maybe three charges if, if it's not all crazy, like in the Chauvin case. But there's guys out there who are literally facing between six and 20 fucking charges, a lot of them for victimless fucking crimes. They have no choice but to take a plea deal for two to five years or get convicted and spend the rest of their life in fucking prison. How the fuck is that even fair? And here's another side point. America imprisons more people than China and Russia combined, minus the slave labor concentration camps, which is off, is not really counted on China's books. But with that there, then it's probably not true. But, you know, it's still pretty fucking fucked up when you count all of the prisoners on the books of China that they allow you to see and all the prisoners in, in Russia and ours far outnumber all of theirs, you know, the, the land of the free, uh, I don't know. All right, so, you know, this needs to be addressed. Now, what a lot of people don't seem to realize is right now, they're just going after the police because, you know, they're the bad guys, right? Now, I personally don't think Getting into the career of law enforcement is that appetizing anymore. 
Number two, there's probably a lot of young people on a lot of departments across the United States who only have maybe five to eight years invested in that career. And they could easily just cash out and walk away. I think we're going to see a lot of that. And I'm just going to say this. When they do defund those police and shit gets really fucking bad, you're going to have warlords pop up and then it's going to get even worse. And you know, guess what? You did it to your fucking self, you idiots. This whole overcharging bullshit has been going on since the 1960s, maybe a little bit before. I haven't really researched a lot of the cases prior to like nine, prior to 1955, but you know, to guarantee a conviction, they always overcharge uh, their people, and, and they do that because if they're convicted on anything, then the the person who's being prosecuted can't sue. Which you know, listen. If more people sued the fucking local governments, state governments, and federal governments for the fucking improprieties that go on in the legal system, a lot of it would get fucking corrected because it's expensive. And you hold the people accountable who fuck it up. Now, we've watched the national debt go way up, right? This is not going to go down anytime soon. We have a lot of people unemployed. We have an administration who's not really interested in bringing back the jobs to America, and they will continue to export them to Mexico and Canada and China and some of the other Asian countries out there until you're working your ass off for pennies a day, just like in China. And then when gas gets to 10 bucks a gallon or more, or they just stop making it, or it's not even cost effective to bring it out to people and they can't travel to work at any jobs to feed their kids. In fact, they can't feed their kids. They can't afford housing. And then you have no police. And your system of justice is broken and defunct. And we're all in mob rule. The United States is going to complete its wobble. And it's going to be called a topple. I have no idea what will come after that. I may not, I probably will not live to see it, but I will say this, it will be incredibly bloody and painful for everyone. That's my prediction. All of this is based off historical fact. Believe it or not, gentlemen, we are fucked. <laughs>